Hello and welcome to Military HF Radio. This is the series introduction. I'm your host, Matthew Sherburn, KF4WZB. In this series, I'm going to show you the episode pipeline. Here, starting off with RF theory, where we'll be talking about all the basics of radio frequency communications. Next episode will be on military HF history, going all the way back to World War I, all the way to the present. The next lesson, which I think is one of the most important, HF near vertical incident skywave propagation lesson. We'll talk all about NVIS and how you're able to implement it. Followed by our fourth episode on VOACAP analysis. I'll take you through the website This shows you how to input your information and the information of the distant end station so that you can come up with the best frequencies that you need to communicate with. Then the fifth episode will be on HF antennas. We're going to talk about everything. Everything from dipole antennas, vertical whip antennas, the best way to orient them to help with Nivis propagation, and also for communicating long distances past 500 miles. Our sixth episode is gonna be on second generation and third generation automatic link establishment. ALE used heavily within the US Army Mars community and also in the military. Our seventh episode is gonna talk about digital communications and how to best utilize those digital communications techniques and also the technology behind it. Our eighth episode is gonna talk specifically on US Army Mars or the military auxiliary radio system. And then finally, the ninth episode is going to wrap up with lessons from the field. Talking to you about a couple of uh, anecdotal evidence behind some of the the, uh, core concepts we've talked about through episodes one through eight. And hopefully give you some more context to uh, issues that can happen out there and just just some personal uh, stories from that. And then finally, why high frequency radio? We're dominated by SATCOM or satellite communications, and it costs lots and lots of money. HF can be an excellent primary, alternate, contingency, or emergency part of your communications plan. And that's either for both low data rate and voice communications. And throughout the episodes, we'll talk about why the digital communications is low data and not the type of bandwidth that satellite communications can push. And that's one thing, though, that HF cannot replace is the sheer amount of bandwidth that satellite communications provides us. But in the absence of satellite communications, we can still push data. We can use HF in mobile operations. You can attach a specific type of antenna to your vehicles in order to communicate on the move. The biggest thing though is there's no infrastructure needed. I mean, outside of needing to attach equipment to vehicles or antennas or the massive HF stations that might be out there, there is no satellites in the sky. And so that is the one key thing behind this all, that if if all the satellites go away, we can still communicate. And that's what just makes HF so powerful. It is what was used World War I, World War II, Korean War, Vietnam, and onwards, and it's still relevant today. So I hope that you stay with me as we talk at our next episode on RF theory. Thank you.